Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone. Welcome back to the art room. It's me, Mrs. Reed Wright. Let's start our day with our hello song. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Hello to you, hello to you, hello to you, hello to me. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Boys and girls, you know what we're doing these days. It's the ABCs of art. And today is the letter L. The letter L for lobster. And we're meeting Pablo Picasso. I don't know why I say meeting him. We did um, a nutcracker in the style of Pablo Picasso. We did a snowman in the style of Pablo Picasso. And today we're doing a print that I had not really studied before when I was in art school. And I thought it was interesting and kind of a funny story because usually cats We'll try and go after things that move. Well, in this picture, Pablo Picasso made this lobster going after the cat, and the cat has its back up. And I'm just making the lobster today. But if you want to add the cat to it to be inspired by Pablo Picasso, the whole thing, then you can do that. But I'm going to do the song about the ABCs of art. Ready? A, B, C, D, E of art. That's the way that we will start. K is for kitchen. Lobster starts with an L. M is for mother, we can tell. N is for night, ocean starts with O. Art and the alphabet, here we go. All right, let's take a look at the art. Let me turn myself sideways. We know that Pablo Picasso was a Spanish artist. And he started out painting. And they even he did so many kinds of art. He was kind of an experimental artist. He, when he saw something, he thought he'd give that a try. He'd give something else a try. And at first, he had his blue period, while all his pictures were painted with shades of blue. Then he went into his rose period, where things were colored with pinks and rose-colored things. And you know he's best known for his cubist art, where things are broken up and kind of put back together in a funny way. So this lobster is lots of geometrical shapes. And when we draw it, we're going to make this shape and then add its head, its long antenna, its pincher claws, and its other legs, and its fanned out tail. And it, we're going to use different colors of blue. And then when it dries, I'm going to outline it with my permanent pen. But if you want to outline yours with a black pen or a black paint later, that would work. But you just have to wait for your paint to dry, or it will mix together and it will all be muddy. And if you like muddy paints, that's your thing. But I'm just saying, I'm keeping my blues bright and beautiful, so it kind of reminds me of the ocean. Then, like I said, you can make the cat. Look, he even painted some white teeth on it. And look how scared that eye is. And its claws are out, probably to say, get out of here, lobster. So let's see what the rhyme is for the lobster. Picasso's Cubist Lobster has scared this cat. If I saw those pincher claws, I would scat. And scat means get out of here. Then the two rhymes are cat and scat. If you want to do this with me, put your hands out and we say cat, scat. They both say at. That's how we remember rhymes. If they both end with the same vowel sound ending sound, those are rhyming ones. Cat, at, at, scat, at, at. Yep, they're in the same family. All righty, so we know, and the other thing about Pablo Picasso, you know I told you, he's always dressed in a little striped shirt. I just bought a puppet of him yesterday, and it one fits on my finger and another one's on a card. And if I pull it up and I'd say, who is it? And they'd say, Pablo Picasso, because he's wearing the striped shirt. All right, let me set these things aside. I even brought a little outline of a lobster so we'd have something to kind of look at. I'm going to put this on top of my construction paper box and get my table up. 
get up here, table. All righty, and pick up my things. Now, I do like to ask you how you think I'm going to put my paper. I brought this one that shows what we're doing, and it is done by a child artist, but they are older. This was by a 12-year-old. And I brought this little drawing of one so I would remember the parts. And look, they did this. When they drew theirs, then they added on a rectangle, another rectangle, another rectangle, and finally a, a trapezoid and a big trapezoid up here. So there are boxes starting and ending with trapezoids. And then they really made their claws just like a little tulip. And so if that's what you think looks good, do that. I'm doing everything on my white paper and then later I will cut it out and add it to a background and put some seaweed in there. You notice this project does not have the cat in it. But let's count how many legs this guy put on here. One, two, three, four. I don't know, I didn't study a lobster's body. I don't really know how many, but since it's my art, I can make it however I want. Let me set these little things aside that will help me. I'm going to do mine diagonally, I think. No, I think I'll do it this way, because then I can, when I paste it, turn it diagonally. All right, do I want to start with a pencil? Maybe so. So is everyone set up and ready to go? Let's do a great big long Rectangle, leave room for the tail, leave room for the head. A long rectangle that I am planning to cut into three. One piece, middle piece, two, and the bottom piece. This was the end I was going to do my tail. Now a trapezoid has a small line at the top, a larger line, so I'm going to do my diagonal out because the trapezoid has diagonal lines that are the same kind of distance and then I'm going to put my lobster tail there. So really it kind of looks like a house roof, a bigger house roof instead of a triangle one. Now for his um, trapezoid at the top I'm going to put the small line there because that's where I'm going to turn this so you can see. You see my body one two three and my tail trapezoid. So this one I drew it up like that, and I'm going to meet there, there its head is. Now I have to put its kind of claw-like long antenna. Oof, that's kind of scary looking. I know that with this claw is how they come out. And maybe right here out of this trapezoid, I'm going to put his claws, and they are ink, 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 ink. I made mine a little scarier than their tulip ones, but I'm going to make this go in. And they, on the real ones, if you've ever seen them, they kind of have jagged edges here. So I think I'll use my permanent pen to draw the outline now that I have the good shape. I try and stay on the lines that I already drew so I don't have to erase them later if I'm going to paint. So are you following along and using yours? If you don't have a black pen, you know what to do. You can just use your black crayon or a pastel, or if you're gonna be a person who paints first and outlines later, do that. I may have to go back and go over this when my paint gets on it. I don't know, this one's kind of drawing out. I have another one, let me see if it's a better one. It's not as wide, but it will still work out good. Get that antenna. I don't even know if that's what they're called as antennas. I might be teaching you the wrong thing, boys and girls. I think I'm going to split this one in a, and do two sides. So I'm going to make this and do it on a blue line, maybe. And this one, I might do a fan. Oof. Oof. Don't know. That's how I'm going to make it fan out. Now, here's my paints. You've seen this before. Not going to use my fancy brush, but I have a bunch of paint brushes lined up here in case I want to change them out. Don't fall off the table, all you brushes. All right, now I am going to put some white paint in here and make it some light blue, that one mostly white and a little blue. I'm going to set this paintbrush aside right here. 
because I'm going to use a skinnier one to do my painting of the lobster part. So next to that blue line, I mean next to that black line that I did with my outliner pen, I'm going to make a stripe of blue. Getting in here, maybe I'll make this one just a stripe guy. Stripe dark blue, then I might put light blue in between and I might mix it. One thing about these tempera paints that they have children use at school, you can tell they're school paints because they're not blended together. I hardly ever use my paint straight from the bucket because I like it to be a color that's not in the buckets at school. I like to make my own. I better move my water over if I'm going to be doing much mixing and get some water into these paints. And I have my paints that dried inside this plastic container and I can use them because they um, get wet from the water and they're good again. I don't have to worry about that they dried up in my egg carton because these have been in here for weeks. I just paint over the top of it so I don't wash out my egg carton. I just keep painting over using the colors that are already in there. It's like a watercolor pad. You don't have to um, paint, wash your paints out and waste up some of it. Oh, this color, I don't even know this one. This one I got from the office today. I thought, oh, that's a good color. Oh, it's a green one. I think I'll mix it up with some blue too. See how I can mix it right on my paper? It doesn't have to be mixed up in the palette. It can be mixed up right on your painting. So I think I'll make it a pattern. This greeny color, the blue, the greeny color, the blue. I like it with a little more blue in there. And it can be mixed up with the one next door to it because I'm just mixing and mixing. I am happy with this. Boys and girls, I hope you're liking yours too. This one is going to be mixed up together. This lobster is going to be so pretty when I finish it. Are you enjoying yours? Are you using all blues? Did you choose blue as your color too? Kind of like Picasso did. I think I'll make another dark blue. This will be a dark blue in here. I put quite a bit of water in it, so it's making it more um, sky blue. Oh, and it still has a little of that green color from below, which is okay. Now, boys and girls, if this letter is L, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, tomorrow is letter M. And M is for mother, and we're going to be doing a tea party for mother. Because mothers, my mother, loves the tea parties. So tomorrow, if you'll just bring white paper, a black permanent pen, and your coloring tools, we're going to make a stack of teacups to honor mothers and with Mary Cassatt. So boys and girls, bring the white paper, black pens, and coloring tools. Let's sing goodbye to one another. Goodbye, see you next time, everyone. Goodbye, see you next time, everyone. Goodbye to you, goodbye to you, goodbye to you, goodbye to me. Goodbye, see you next time, everyone. See you tomorrow, boys and girls. A brand new day, time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun, learning is good for everyone.